My name is Hans and welcome to my channel and to this episode of Darktable Insights. Darktable is one of the best free tools for organizing and editing your photos. Today I'm going to show you the different ways of adjusting color saturation in Darktable. So let's get started. Okay, color saturation. That's something that can be adjusted in many different ways in Darktable. I've uh, put up all the different modules here in the favorites group and I'll uh, go through them from the bottom up. First we got Vibrance. This one does very little to the image. Its purpose is to saturate the most saturated areas a little bit more and also reduce the lightness to make the colors pop a little bit. So if we just turn it on, you hardly see any difference here. There's a little bit of difference in the red walls. If you turn it all the way up to 100%, you see a little bit more. It's a very subtle difference. Personally, I never use this module. For a stronger effect, you might want to make a, to duplicate this instance. Turn on the new one, and there you can see a difference. So turn off both of them. Here's the original. And here is with two instances. But not much of a difference really. So we'll delete this one, reset this one, and we go on to color zones which I think is a fun module. You can use it for a variety of things, including saturation adjustments. So, the most common thing is to, is to adjust separate colors. That's the default setting. Adjust lightness, saturation and U. And for the saturation, we can say we take the reds, Pull them up, and you increase saturation of the red walls in these huts, or you can decrease it. Or you can take the greens, and you adjust the grass. If you want to control exactly which colors you adjust, then you can use the color picker up here. And just place place it on the um, color you want to adjust. You get this line here on the curve, and then you can take those triangles, place one on the line, and then you adjust exactly this color. Also, if you want a narrower narrower uh, adjustment. You can take the neighboring triangle, move the point closer. This one is uh, at the end you can't move, but if you want to have the curve say to go from there and adjust there and the next point there you can just take this point over here, you can take this one here and then the next one here. And if you then use your mouse wheel to reduce the circle, then you can make a very narrow selection. If you increase the circle, then you affect more, more of the curve. And if you go down here and select by, you can select by U, as is the default, or by saturation, or by lightness. So if we choose saturation, then we have the least saturated pixels down here, and the most saturated up here. So we can adjust a range of saturations. And one thing I like to do often is to 
balance out the saturation of a of an image by boosting the least saturated areas. So then I drag up the lower end of the curve here like this and then you can use the mix slider to adjust how much of the to adjust how much you adjust the saturation you can drag it down Oh, you can drag it up. So now you see the sky and the trees behind here are more saturated. And the red walls are uh, more or less unaffected. I think this adjustment is very useful many times when I when I want to balance out saturation in images and make them pop a little bit more. Also there's another thing that I found out when I was re researching this episode. That was a way to bring out the contrast and color in the clouds here. What I did was I uh, I chose saturation here and also select by lightness. Then I brought up the lighter part here. Let's see. There we got more saturation in the uh, in the clouds, not so much here in the darker parts. I wanted it to be mostly in these pink parts to emphasize the sunset. So I'll reduce a little bit again in the blues and take the brightest parts up all the way. And then I go over to lightness up here and I will and try to reduce the lightness of these darker clouds. So they're a, bit, a little bit lower here on this one, I think. Yep. Look at that. That really brings out the clouds and the sunset colors here. You can see some artifacts down here, so I'll just isolate this with a mask. Use a gradient and put it here. And this was quite cool, I think. And if you like, you can use another instance of color zones and do the same to the reflection. So they match a little bit better. Okay, that was color zones. Let's reset and go on to contrast, brightness, saturation. Here is just a regular saturation control that works on everything. Next is actually tone curve. And no, I don't mean the L curve. Because this is in LAB color space and I have the L the A and B, and those are the color color channels. So if we double click in here, we get get up the color curve, and if we take the endpoints here and drag them towards the middle, then you can see for this one we. Increase the reds, magentas. Here we increase the greens. Uh, 
And if we go over to the B channel, we do the same to the yellows and to the blues. And you can see the saturation is increased dramatically. And if we take care to put all the endpoints in the same position, then, then the adjustment is neutral without any color cost. And then when it's too much, instead of adjusting all the points to exactly the point you want. You just blend it uniformly and you drag down the opacity. That way you can adjust to the amount you want. And next up is actually levels. Well, if you do it normal way and adjust levels, then you just adjust the lightness, right? But if you blend uniformly and you change the blend mode to either LIB color to chroma or to color let's choose LIB color and then you drag down the highlight slider This increases the saturation, actually. With the highlight slider, you increase the most in the highlights and less down as you go down to the shadows. If you take the mid-tone slider, Take it up and you decrease saturation, bring it down and you increase saturation in the mid-tones. Also if you take the shadow slider and drag up, you re reduce saturation, mostly so in the shadows. You can see the darkest parts here are already black and white, while well, there is still some saturation in the midtones and the highlights. So, especially dragging down the highlights uh, slider might be useful. Okay, next up is color correction. Here, too, is uh, a regular saturation control. But the trick with this one is if you drag it down and you go past zero, then you get negative colors. Next one is color contrast. This one is a simpler version of of the uh, color color uh, channels in the tone curve. So you just drag up these controls. This is the green, ma green magenta. Drag them up and the yellow versus blue. And then you get a neutral, neutral saturation. Also, if you think this is too much, you just blend uniformly and drag down the opacity to get the effect you want. And something I have done is to make some presets. I've taken a few settings with the same value on both channels and I just store them as presets. So I have 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 and 1.5 and then a mono setting for black and white. I'll come back to this one later in the black and white episode. There I'll explain exactly why I use this module to make black and white and not another one.
So we reset this, and then we go to the last node, which is Velvia. Those who are old enough might rem remember from the film days, the Fuji Velvia films, which were famous for the colors. And I think this module is trying to replicate Velvia film in some way. What it does is uh, the strength slider is like is a saturation control. But you see, it only affects most. It mostly affects. Uh, Highlights and shadows, and the buildings here are hardly affected at all. And that's because of the midtones bias slider, which protects midtones. So set at one, there's not much happening in the midtones, but if you drag it, drag it down, then the midtones are coming up. Drag it all the way down, and it's just another saturation control. That's it for today. Next time we'll adjust the color balance. If you like this channel then hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an episode. And I'd be very happy if you visit my other uh, outlets online. All links are in the description. And if there's anything about Darktable you want me to talk about then please let me know in the comments. So see you next time. Bye! <laughs>